Surface Comparison. This topic deals with not only calculating the volume between two surfaces, but also comparing their surface by depth shading. We will start a new project, and it will be called Depth Shading. Folder will be under Volumes, click OK, then press Enter. And the configuration will be Getting Started, and click Create. We'll finish the Setup panel, Maximize Plan View 1, and move the Recalc panel down to the bottom left. We're going to read in the survey data. It's all in the form of just one file. File I.O. Data input 12DA4DA. We browse up a level and pick on Depth Shading Survey. If we then click Read and Finish. Here we have some original survey, some stripping survey, and the two corresponding tins. To view the original models, we will firstly turn off the stripped models. So hold the control key down and drag and pick the relevant models and select. We can also toggle on our contours. In this case, because it's very flat, you can't see the contours because they're one meter increment. So we need to go to menu, settings, tins, and here we can set the contour increment to 0 0.1 and the bold increment to 0 0.2. We click set, then finish. It's a good idea to save away these models to a listing using the option view, model save restore. The file name we can type in will be original survey and the view we're going to save away is view 1 and click save. That means at any time if we needed to bring these models back in, we could just call up that file. We will now do the same for the strip surface. Again, we will turn off the models we have on the screen at the moment. Turn on any model to do with this stripping surface. And again, the contours are toggled on straight away here. If you wanted to see the triangles, you could turn off tin contours. Again, we're going to save this away to a model listing. We select View, Model Save Restore, and the file name to save will be Stripping Survey. Select View 1 and click Save, then Finish. Prior to performing any volume calculations, we need to check that the strip surface here sits inside the natural surface or the original surface. If we click on our plus button and turn on Tin Original, we just ensure that the actual strip surface does fall inside the natural. If the strip surface went outside the natural surface, it would only do a volume where the two surfaces coincided, so there would be a bit of volume missing. We'll now perform volume calculations. We're going to use the exact method and check it with the end area as per the previous option. Design, volumes. If we were going to use the options again, we can click on volumes and just pin it over on the side. Firstly, we'll use exact tin to tin. The original tin will be original. The new tin will be stripping. The report file will be strip volumes. And we're going to use a polygon. And we're going to use a polygon, which will be the change of grade string at the edge of the stripping. We then click volume. And we can now exit the report and finish on the panel. We'll now check this using end area, end area tin to tin. And again, we're going to use an original and a stripping models. We'll set the angle similar to the previous example at 135. We'll set the distance between them, say every two meters here. And we won't worry about the sections in this example. Again, we'll pick the polygon, and we're going to pick the previous report file, and click Volume. We append to the end of the volume. Right, the exact method was 1552, and this one's 1552 as well, so it's got a good check on it. 
OK, we can finish on that option and finish on the volumes panel. To be able to identify the depths of the stripping, we can now create depth shading. This is done by using the option tins, color, tins depths color. To make it a little bit easier to pick the data, we're just going to turn off the two tins for the moment. Here we pick the original tin, which was original, the new tin, which was stripping, and we're going to pick a range file that we've got made up. Click on the folder icon, click on browse, and go up one level, and you'll see a file there, depthshading.drf. If we want to have a look at the range file, we click on the folder icon and click open. And you'll see here that there is a range of a from value, a to value, and a corresponding color. So we'll just select finish on this file. The plan view we're going to paint will be plan view 1. The model for faces, we'll just type in faces. And we're going to clean the model beforehand. We can again pick the polygon out of the edge of the strip surface. We click colour and the, and the depth shading is coloured. If you were to refresh the view it disappears because we haven't turned it on on the view yet. So we go to our plus button and double click on faces. To be able to tabulate the colours we're going to use an option under drafting, text and table, tabulate range file. We need to change the range type to depth. We call up the range file, again clicking browse, upper level and double clicking on depth shading. The units are in meters so we're just going to type in meters here. We need to locate the top left of the table so we click on the icon, just pick somewhere here and accept and the heading will be stripping depths. Now the model is and the font is set up under the font button so we click on font. The text model here is going to be changed to TXT depth table. The color we can change it to say red. The text size it's in world units so if one to a thousand if you did two that would be two millimeters high. And we'll just set the type to Arial. If we click Set Finish and then click Process. If we go to our plus button and turn on TXT Depth Table and you'll see a table that shows the values for each of the colors.